Hi everyone, we're back for another Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar. Today we're going to be presenting an introduction to AutoCAD MEP. My name is Ashley and joining me today are my colleagues Dave, our presenter, and Victoria who's going to be helping to answer some of your questions. We'd like to thank everyone for taking time out of their day to be here. We're very happy to have you. So before we get started, we just have a couple of um, quick polls because we'd like to know who's, um, who's joining us today. So if you can help us out with those, that would be great. So the first one that we have here is, is this your first Autodesk help webinar? All right, so it looks like for 95% of you, this is not your first um, Autodesk Help webinar, so welcome back. And for 5% of you, it is, so a very special welcome to you. Um, the next poll that we have here is, which AutoCAD-based application are you using? So we'll give you a, about 30 seconds or so to, to start that. All right, so it looks like we have a nice mix here. It looks like about 44% of you are using AutoCAD, 20% are using AutoCAD LT, 24% are using AutoCAD Architecture, MEP, and some other verticals there. 11% of you are using AutoCAD Civil 3D or AutoCAD uh, Map, and 2% are using other uh, programs. All right, and the final question that we have here is if you use AutoCAD MEP, how well do you know it? All right, and that was a pretty quick one there. So about 80% of you say, I don't use it. 6% are novice. 9% are somewhat familiar. And about 5% of you are experts. So you're in luck. Dave is also our expert. So uh, thank you for um, helping us out with that. So a little bit about us. Um, Dave, our presenter, is an AutoCAD MEP specialist. And he's based out of our uh, Manchester, New Hampshire office. I'm also a technical support specialist, and I'm based out of Boston. And Victoria, who's going to help to answer your questions, is a technical support specialist as well. And she's also based out of our Manchester, New Hampshire office. Before we get started, please feel free to leave questions in the chat window, and we'll answer them as best we can. This session is being recorded, and links are available in the registration reminder, the post-webinar survey, as well as the chat window. And some of our upcoming webinar topics include June 23rd, Back to Basics, an introduction to viewports and layouts in AutoCAD LT 2017, June 30th, Beyond the Basics, Database Connectivity in AutoCAD 2017, July 7th, uh, we have a break, so happy 4th of July, July 14th, The Third Dimension, Solid Modeling in AutoCAD 2017, and July 21st, we have part two of Tips and Tricks. You can watch past webinars anytime by visiting our Autodesk YouTube channel. You can also download the data sets from Box if you'd like to follow along. You can register for Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar series by visiting our landing page. Please visit and encourage your peers to visit our AutoCAD community forums and share your knowledge. And if you're interested to share your feedback with the AutoCAD development team, we also encourage you to join the AutoCAD Customer Council. If you'd like to get involved there, you can email us at autocad.beta at autodesk.com. And our Autodesk Knowledge Network, um, we have resources for not only AutoCAD, but AutoCAD LT, as well as many of the other verticals. Um, you can download service packs and hot fixes, and there's just a ton of information there. So please visit the, um, the Autodesk Knowledge Network. We put a lot of time into creating articles and to help make life a little bit 
um, easier for you. So this week's agenda um, includes uh, HVAC and plumbing and piping. Uh, Dave's also going to cover plumbing, electrical, schematics, schedules and sections, and he's going to give a brief overview of the user interface. So let's see this in AutoCAD MVP. Dave, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay, thanks Ashley. Uh, let me just show my screen. So can you see uh, my AutoCAD screen okay? I can see it perfectly. Okay, great. Um, so thank you everybody for uh, joining today. Um, really kind of been wanting to do this uh, particular presentation for a long time. Uh, I've been involved with the AutoCAD MEP product since the soft desk days, if anybody's familiar with, uh, with, that, pro with that company, uh, which was acquired by Autodesk uh, some 18 years or, or so ago. Um, so I've been uh, doing MEP work for a long time. I've uh, done a lot of presentations over the years to people uh, showing AutoCAD MEP as well as AutoCAD architecture and uh, really kind of fond of this product. Uh, so the first thing I want to do here is just to give you a quick run through about the user interface and where things are. So inside of AutoCAD MEP, um, for, probably the first thing that you need to know is that we use the property palette a lot. So I actually have that uh, docked but expanded here so that they have access to the property palette at any time. Uh, we have uh, various tool palettes uh, for each of the disciplines. So uh, whether you're doing uh, HVAC work or piping or plumbing or whatever, um, we have you know uh, the ability to change to the the proper tool palette, uh, as well as the various commands in the ribbon, and you'll, I'll show that in a second. Uh, I'm also going to be using, but really not talking a whole lot about the Project Navigator. This is kind of like uh, the Sheet Set Manager on steroids, if you're familiar with the Sheet Set Manager. It has a lot of additional capability that the Sheet Set Manager doesn't have. Uh, so I'll be opening drawings and such using the, uh, the Sheet Set Manager. Um, one of the first things that uh, I want to talk about is just the profile. So uh, um, actually, I'm just going to minimize AutoCAD for a second and open up my little uh, folder here with my desktop shortcuts. Uh, one of the most common things that we get for, for uh, tech support case in AutoCAD MEP is uh, opening up um, AutoCAD MEP with the wrong profile. So for example, you'll be running the, um, or trying to run imperial drawings, but maybe running with the global or the metric profile. So you want to make sure that you're using the US imperial desktop shortcut if you're running an imperial drawing file so that you're getting the, uh, the proper um, settings. What that does is it actually, um, just opening up options here for a moment, uh, it actually will control, so I'm set to US Imperial, all of the folders that are uh, um, being specified. So here you can see I'm, I'm all pointing to the US Imperial folders and if you're not set to that you're going to get uh, like choose apart dialogues and such. Um, so make sure that you set to the right thing. Uh, a couple other things is uh, we're going to be uh, from time to time maybe using the style manager. Um, style manager is a uh, tool to access all the various types of objects and settings that are in the product. So there's a tab for architectural objects, uh, documentation for scheduling and property set information, um, HVAC, etc. So uh, I'll be using this a little bit throughout the, the program. And you're going to notice that when I'm drawing things inside of AutoCAD MEP, I'm not going to be changing layers or doing any of that. Uh, that's all going to be controlled by what we call the display manager. So in the display manager, um, we can tell the, the software how to display the geometry, what layer to be to put it on, what color to put it on, etc. Um, by changing the display, we can even change whether something is visible or not. So the display manager is going to do all of that work for me behind the scenes. So uh, that's just a quick little run through about that, but you'll see as I go through here, um, there's different workspaces for each of the disciplines, including architecture. So it's important to note that AutoCAD MEP actually includes all of AutoCAD architecture as well. So if you ever have to draw a retaining wall or uh, uh, add a steel beam or, or something as part of MEP work, you can still do that because you have access to all the architectural tools. So how do you draw things without using AutoCAD MEP? We'll start there. Right? So if I wanted to draw a 24-inch round duct uh, with a smooth radius elbow, what I would probably do in AutoCAD is I would start with the line command, and I would draw a line, and then I would do a fillet. And let's say I would do a fillet with a 30-inch radius since I want a 24-inch duct. 
And then I would use the offset command, and I'll do a 12-inch offset to get a 24-inch duct. All right? So a lot of clicks, a lot of picks. Draw a line to connect things. Right, and then we don't need the center line, so you get rid of that. And then I still even haven't put it on the right layer, right? So we want to make sure that uh, you know you put it on a layer that you want. So a very very manual process. And then if I needed to change the size of something, I'd probably have to uh, just erase it and redraw it, or do a lot more offsets and trims and whatnot. So inside of AutoCAD MEP, we can simply come over here and say I want to draw a duct. And again, I mentioned that we, we're going to use the property palette a, lo a lot. So uh, I'm set to a, a routing preference of a slip joint fitting. I'm going to say I want to draw a 24-inch round duct, uh, specify whatever elevation I want. And all I do is uh, select a, a couple of points and turn the corner. And AutoCAD MEP is automatically going to um, add my fittings in and add the sizes in. So you might wonder, um, actually, let me do one more thing real quick. I'm just going to switch to a rectangular duct, and it's set to 24 by 14. And I do the same thing, and you'll see that uh, it's not only putting in the fittings, but in this case, for rectangular, it's automatically defaulted to a mitered fitting instead of a smooth radius fitting. So you might wonder, how does AutoCAD MEP figure out all that kind of stuff? Well, that's actually controlled here by the routing preferences. So if I look at my slip joint routing preference, I can tell the, the software which type of fitting I want based on the shape of the, of the duct I want. So for a round duct, I'm set to a one and a half times the diameter of smooth radius elbow. And if I want to change that, we can just pick on the drop down here and pick from any of the other options. And for rectangular, I'm set to drawing a mitered elbow. So um, just by picking the shape, it's changing the, the type of fitting that you're using automatically. And uh, and then if I wanted to change the size of something, say, you know what, um, I want this actually to reduce down to 20 inches. So I'm just going to type in 20 inches there. And it says, well, if I'm going to put a 20 inch fitting in there, I better put a reducer in. So it'll allow you to put in a reducer and automatically change the annotation and the tag that's associated with it. So AutoCAD MEP is going to really automate a lot of the tedious process that you have. Oh, uh, and one other thing, if I need to make a change to this, I can just use grips, and I can just grip edit something and stretch it. I don't have to build a selection set or anything. Uh, if I pick on the end of the of the the uh, component here, it will automatically put me into the command. So you're going to see that uh, I can do an awful lot of work without actually selecting anything from the from the ribbon or from a toolbar. Okay, uh, so let's see a little bit more here. If I do some some other things, I'm going to start by drawing. Um, or this this one, one of the things I'm talking about here is that I can select on an object, and one of my favorite commands in the product is this add selected tool. So add selected will not only start a command for me, uh, you drawing whatever object I've I've picked, but it's also going to match things like the system and the elevation and the shape and size or whatever. So when I do an add selected, it automatically set me to drawing an exhaust duct using my slip joint fitting round 12 inches. And if I were to just come over and draw this across um, another duct, you're going to see that, uh, just scroll down here a little bit, that the duct that's underneath the, the larger duct automatically is displaying with hidden lines. I didn't have to stop and break them and create a different layer or anything like that. Uh, it will just automatically change to the to show what you need to. So if I draw, draw it part way across, we're getting hit lines for that. If I draw it further across, it's going to show accordingly. And you know, if I make any other change, it's just going to um, you know update and show what it needs to show. So that's a really cool part of the software is the automatic display of hidden lines. You don't have to go back and break and trim and change layers. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, put in a couple of uh, diffusers to, uh, to see what's happening. So I'm going to just come over here to my ribbon and select equipment. Uh, I could go over and select right from here and get a diffuser. But what I want to do is actually show you a little bit about the breadth of the um, of the types of parts that we have in the product. So you're going to see that uh, if I open up electrical, we have everything from emergency generators that actually have quite a bit of detail to them, um, you know, switch boxes and um, 
you know, things like that, to uh, air terminals, um, boilers, chillers, um, uh, fans, pumps, uh, valves, etc. So there's a lot of content that's right out of the box inside the software. Right? If I open up uh, ball valves or something, uh, you'll see that there's a whole you know range of sizes and stuff for ball valves. Uh, and then if I scroll down even further, there's you know also plumbing uh, components. So all, everything you need for plumbing. So I'm just going to say I want to put in a couple of air terminals. I'm going to select a uh, 24 by 24 inch with a six inch neck. I'll put it in at nine feet. So I'm just going to select a location for this. And I'm just going to copy this. And um, I'm just going to tag it real quick. So uh, to tag it, I could go over and select it from, from my tool palette. Or over here, I could uh, select a, uh, actually it's in the tags. I could select an air terminal tag. But in this case, I already have one in the model, so I'm just going to select it. And I'm going to do add selected. And I'm going to just select a location for my tag. And that will automatically extract the, the identifier, you know, the ID of the component, as well as the CFM. So I didn't specify a CFM yet. So I would just go ahead and say I want to uh, modify this. And I'm going to say that this is 250 CFM. When I say OK, you'll see that the tag's automatically updated. It's not updating attributes. It's just uh, pulling data right from the objects. And then if I want to connect this to my, my main duct here, uh, I can just grab on the little uh, plus script. And I can tell it how I want to connect to this. In this case, I want to use a elbow as a rigid duct. And I'm just going to come over here and pick anywhere near the duct. It'll see that there's a duct there, and it will go ahead and connect to it. One of the things that's really neat here is that uh, if I go into my object snap settings, uh, I don't need to run with AutoCAD object snaps turned on. Right? I can actually turn those off. Um, what we're actually using are AutoCAD MEP object snaps. So there's a smart connector for um, you know, snapping to a duct, which is called a duct curve, or snapping to a connector on a part, which is a, a duct connector. So uh, that's going to make it a lot easier to, to route things. Um, I'm going to do it the other way. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say I'm going to start here with uh, whatever takeoff I want and just start routing. And then let's say I don't want to use a rigid duct. I'm just going to change to a flexible duct. And I'll go ahead and uh, pick on my diffuser. And it will automatically route to that. And the really cool part here is that if I were to move my diffuser, you're going to see that the um, connection is automatically maintained as well. So it's going to update that. So that's really a, a kind of a neat little tool. And um, I'm not going to spend the whole time laying out all of that. Um, but let me jump over to a slightly different topic here. Sorry, jumping around my mouse. Uh, let's, I, right, what I have over in this room, in this lab, is a bunch of grills that I have set up. And I actually drew this using what we call an undefined duct. So it, it doesn't have a shape, it doesn't have a size, but it does have an elevation. And uh, you'll see here, actually, if I, um, since I highlighted that, it actually is extracting the flow rate for everything that's downstream of it. So it, it's a, combining all of those components into that. And we actually have a built-in duct calculator into the software. So um, actually, before I do that, let me uh, come over here to my system definitions and look at supply. Uh, what I want to show is that there's actually design information associated with the system that you're using. So for my supply duct, I'm actually, I can tell it I want a size and a velocity or a friction, and I can specify the roughness and the density of the materials being used. So by default, if I size this, this is, right now, this is going to size based on 800 feet per minute. Um, so when I go into, say, don't, si don't save there. So when I select on the duct and I go into my duct calculator, you're going to see that uh, um, I can use the default, or I can actually override the values to whatever I want. So I'll just use the default settings. Uh, I can tell it what type of shape I want to use for the, my main. So in this case, I'm using rectangular. Uh, I'm going to tell it, in this particular instance, that I want to use the shape from the air terminal to determine my branch size or shape. Uh, and then I can set 
maximum round sizes or height for rectangular and oval. So I'm saying that I'd never want to see anything um, thicker than 20 inches uh, with a height of more than 20 inches. And I don't want to have a 13 inch duct or something, so I have this set to even sizes only. So all I have to do is hit start. It'll ex um, grab all the information for, from the model. I'm just going to tell it what size or what type of taps I want. So I'm just hitting OK for each of those. And once you do this once, it'll kind of remember it in the future. And then um, what type of uh, transition I want. <clears throat> And you can see that it says it's 100% success rate, and it's automatically modeled that duct system for me. So now all I have to do is uh, come back to my tool palette, and I'll go to annotation, I'll grab a label, and I can just add in my labels so I can see what, what sizes I have there, and I'm done. The only uh, kind of gotcha, I guess, is that um, AutoCAD MEP doesn't look at airflow as far as transitions and such, so this really should be going the other way. So to fix that, you just pick on them and hit the, the grip, and it'll toggle them into the correct orientation. So it's very easy to fix something like that. Uh, and there you go. You have a, a duct system that is sized automatically, and all of that information is stored on the object. So that's a, I mean, um, I guess I didn't mention this. This can be a pretty brief overview since I'm trying to cover all the disciplines, but uh, that hopefully gives you a little idea of what it can do on the ducting side. Um, let me jump over to a different drawing. So I'm going to get to uh, the roof portion of my model. So I'm just going to go over here to the penthouse or the roof. And I've got a you know, bunch of piping and a bunch of ducting shown here. Um, and what I want to do is I'm going to use my piping tools, and I'm going to connect my pumps together. I'm going to connect this line into my main line, and then I'll connect the chiller into that line as well. So I'll show you how easy this is to do. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm kind of jumping over to piping. So let me jump over into my piping workspace. And what that's going to do is that's going to change my ribbon and my tool palettes automatically. So now I have my piping tools up front. And if I go to the tool palette, you'll see that I have all my piping tools here. And we can, we can actually um, create tools that will start uh, drawing pipes with whatever type of system you want. So right now I have like supply, return, whatever. But if I wanted to do refrigeration or condenser piping or whatever, I can create my tools to do that, or I could set them up by routing preferences or by shape and size. Uh, one thing that I want to show on routing preferences here, let me go over to uh, my pipe routing preferences, and the one I'm going to be using um, for the routing here is called generic flanged. So this one is just set up so it says, okay, you know, here's the elbow I want when I draw a, um, just a straight elbow or whatever reducing elbow. But what I want to show is that uh, when it comes to piping, they don't have to be uh, just one list of fittings. If I look at grooved and threaded, what this is going to do is it says that uh, from uh, one and a quarter inches to three inches, I'm going to use these threaded fittings. When I get above three and a half inches, I'm going to switch to grooved and using these settings. And then I've got an additional settings for 14 to 18 inches or 20 to 24 inches. So if I were to show you that, I'm just going to come over and draw a pipe. And let's switch to that uh, grooved and threaded uh, routing preference, and I'll start with a three-inch pipe. Let me zoom in here. So I turn the corner, and I'm getting a threaded fitting. If I jump up to four inches, and you can see when I jump to four, I'm jumping into the grooved section. Now I'm getting couplings added, right? So we, we are able to change that really easily. One of the really neat things in MEP is we also have this thing called the object viewer. So if I want to see what I just drew, uh, maybe I have some uh, a potential interference or something like that, I can select the objects and pop it up into my object viewer. And we can actually see this here in the, in the viewer. 
So I've got my threaded fitting and I've got my grooved couplings over here. Um, so you can see exactly what you're doing without switching the entire model to a 3D space. So I'm going to get rid of that and let me just uh, connect these components together. So I've got a couple of pumps. Um, the pumps actually are 3D as well. There's uh, information about the connector heights and everything. And I'm just going to select on the pump. Let's see if I can get out of here. Oh, there we go. I'm going to select on the pump. And just like I did with the duct, you'll see that there's a, uh, a little grip here, which will allow me to add in a pipe or a plumbing line. Uh, kind of the difference between a pipe and a plumbing line in AutoCAD MEP is a pipe actually will be modeled in 3D with 3D geometry and, and 3D space. The plumbing line is really more of a schematic representation. So uh, when, often when people are doing plumbing layouts, um, especially in the past, um, today people are actually starting to model pipe plumbing, uh, you can just use a schematic plumbing line instead. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, say I want to start with the, my pipe object. And I'm going to change to my generic flange routing preference. And I'm just going to pick a point out here a little bit. And then to connect to the other pump, I'm not going to use object tracking or anything. All I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, turn off my object snap. All I'm going to do is pick on the connector there. And AutoCAD MEP sees that there's a pipe connection. It tells me that it only has, in this case, one option that it found for routing those. And I'm going to accept it. So very, very simple to connect those two components. And just again to emphasize the uh, the you know smartness of it, you know we can manipulate it, stretch things anywhere we want. If I want to connect this now to my main line, I'm just going to pick on a grip and I'm going to pick near that other pipe. And in this case, it's found 11 different options for how to connect that. Right? I can have a T with a drop and then going across, whatever. And if I hit N for next. I can toggle between the various options that it found, right? Some of these are kind of odd, maybe you wouldn't want them. But that's the one I want with them going straight up from the uh, lower pipe and then over to the one that I want to connect to. I hit accept and a return. And again, you can see that it displays the hidden line graphics and everything. Um, and then to connect over here, I'm going to grab it. I'm going to say I want to change to an 8-inch pipe. And, oops, oh, sorry, picked the wrong point there. And I'm going to connect to that, just accept it. I'm going to come from over here and say I want to connect to that. And I'm going to say previous this time, because I know that's in the beginning, and hit accept, and boom, I'm done. I've just finished routing all of that. Um, and then if you want to see what that looks like again, right, we could just pick up whatever piece we want and look at that in my object viewer. Right, so just route you know all of that piping that we just had. So very easy to to uh, to get into uh, the completed model. Um, there's also, by the way, the ability to display things in single line if you want to just see it in single line. There's no reason to have to display things with double line if you don't want to. But uh, just to give you an idea of what's going on. I'm actually going to leave this drawing open for a bit because I'm going to come back to it in a little, little while. I'll jump over and show a little bit of uh, on the plumbing side. Uh, what I want to show over here is basically, um, as I said, in plumbing lines, all we're doing is showing things schematically. So um, we're not necessarily showing th uh, a pipe where it's actually going to be you know, modeled or something. I can show it wherever I want. But there's still intelligence associated with this. Even though this is just a single line 2D object, um, it knows that it's, in this case, a one inch pipe. Um, it's got no slope. It has an elevation associated with it. It knows that it's copper, etc. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and, and uh, connect to uh, an existing line. I can just sit here and pick on, well, actually I'll just do it this way. I'm going to do an add selected. I'm going to select on the plumbing line. And then I'm just going to select on the uh, plumbing fixture. So I want to connect to the cold water. Probably don't want to connect to the waste. That would be a, a kind of a mistake here. And say OK. And then uh, it says, you know, how do I want to connect to it? I'm going to say I want to add a riser and it will automatically add that. Or I could do it the other way. I could just uh, select on the main line here and actually and connect over. Uh, 
Yeah, man. Actually, that's drawing. Oh, I was drawing a, a pipe instead of a plumbing line. Anyway, so it, I'll just do it, do it the other way. I'm just going to connect again to the to the, the cold water line and add a riser. So very easy to to just draw 2D plumbing. Um, we do the same thing with uh, my tags. I'm going to do it. Add selected, and just add in a couple of uh, tags. All right, and grab my urinals. And if I take a look at this, there's actually data being assigned to the uh, component. So you'll see that uh, it knows what the cold water connection size is, um, the uh, description, the item which is being pulled over in the tag, etc. So now if I want to create a schedule of all the plumbing fixtures that are in, in the model, I should jump over to uh, my plumbing um, workspace first. And I'm just going to select a plumbing fixture schedule. I'll say I want to schedule everything and I'll just give it a start point and drop it in and there's my plumbing fixture schedule. All that information is extracted directly from the object. So I didn't have to go in and, and you know add attributes, it's just all data that's being stored on the objects uh, and I can create whatever type of schedule that I want. I'll show another example of a schedule in just a little bit. Uh, we can also do plumbing riser diagrams. So if I open up that, go over here to uh, my plumbing riser, <clears throat> just a simple little riser here. Um, but this is actually using schematic symbols in this case. Uh, I'll say maybe I want to grab one of these symbols and I'm going to do an add selected and I'm just going to pop it in over here. Um, just drag it in whatever direction I want. and. The neat part about these objects is there's actually um, different planes associated with these. So um, I'll probably going to end up flipping this in the wrong direction here, but I'll just show you that just by picking on the, the little icon, we can flip it into whatever direction we want. So I don't have to find that particular symbol. I can just tell it which way to orient itself, and it will do so. So I can just come over and say do an add selected. <clears throat> I'm going to change my mode to be an isometric top plane. Oops, I missed the uh, connection point there. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry about that. Um, so I can just uh, add that in real quick. Uh, do it on the same thing on the other side. And then I'll just grab my fixture stack and just set the orientation. And it's that easy to create a uh, riser diagram. So, uh, you know, it does the schematics as well as the 3D modeling. Um, which kind of brings me to schematics. Let me show, show a couple of things there. And let's go over to, uh, I'll start with my mechanical schematic. So what I want to do is uh, I'm going to create a, just another loop here for this other set of pumps. Um, to do that, uh, I'm just going to grab a line, do an add selected, kind of start in the middle. And I'm just going to eyeball it just to make it quick here. Okay, and then I can grab whatever symbols I want, do an add selected here, I can just drag that in, specify the, the orientation that I want. And when I'm placing these things, right, um, I, I'm not breaking the line or anything. You'll see if I highlight the line there, that's still one line. It's, it just happens to be a schematic line. So if I need to move something to, to make room for something else, uh, which is probably the most common thing they have to do with schematics, uh, I'm not building weird selection sets and stuff. I can just drag and drop things very quickly. Um, I'll show you another quick example here. And I'm going to open up my plumbing schematic. And in this case, I want to show you, if I um, edit the line style here, that we can tell it how to manage when you have a, a one line crossing another line. So right now I have this set with a little um, 
you know, loop uh, showing an overlap, uh, or I could do a break, or I can show with nothing. So if I were to come over and, uh, sorry, my mouse is not behaving behaving itself, and I just do an add selected here, and I come across, uh, let's see where I wanted to go. Well, yeah, whatever. So it's just going to automatically put in that little loop so I can say that's feeding into my floor drain there. Um, and again, you know, if, if something changes, that's going to change accordingly. So uh, I, even something like schematics, there's a lot of value being added into the product. Uh, so let's jump over to a different topic. Let's jump over to electrical. So I'm going to start off with uh, scroll up here a little bit and grab my lighting plan. Okay. And inside of um, my lighting plan, uh, what I've done in this drawing is I've kind of broken it up and just to, to show that you can use wiring or not use wiring and still have all of the intelligence of the model. Um, if I pick on one of these lights and I pick on my electrical properties, then um, in this case you can see that it has a load of 96 volt amps, uh, it's a single pole device, uh, Etc. Right, and I can tell what what load category I wanted if I want to or any of that. Um, but I can actually store that information um, on the style of an object or on an instance of the object. So in this case, I've done this basically style based. So if I edit the style and I go to uh, my connectors, all of that information is stored here. Um, you could. Like I said, you could do it either way. So if you wanted to just to use a, a duplex receptacle and um, have it to whatever load you want, you can just, you know, don't specify it as style-based, just do it as an instance-based type of property. Um, but if I, if I do this, and I'm going to go to my manage, basically inserting the devices are just like inserting blocks, but they happen to be smart blocks. And if I go into uh, my electrical workspace, and I select my electrical settings here. Um, well, we, I'll start over on the left. We can set up voltage definitions. So, for example, for a 120 volt system, this is going to allow me to connect devices that are set between 110 and 130 volt amps. Um, so if you have a 115 volt uh, de device, you can still connect it to my 120 volt system. Um, we can set up how you want to circuit things. So um, do you want to just add things in sequential numbers, you know, one, two, three, or group by the number of poles, etc.? Uh, I can tell it to check when I'm if I overload a circuit and how what percentage of a rating I want to be warned at. So I'll show you that here in a moment, and then all of this information is stored in an electrical project database. Um, typically, this is not a DWG file. This is an old project that I'm working with. Uh, typically, this would be like uh, a database file itself. So you can have multiple drawings all feeding into that same database file, so that when we are doing um, panel schedules and stuff, all of that information is right there and connected together. Um, and the way that you see all this information is through the circuit manager. So I can sit here and look at uh, my uh, panels. Let's see, this is, uh, what is this one? This is panel H2. So if I come over to uh, panel H2, which I'm on right now, you can see that uh, it's pulling out the total load of each of the circuits. Um, the rating, the voltage, etc. So all of that information is being stored here so that we can extract it at, at any point. Um, I'm just going to, in, in this drawing, I just want to show a, another example of a schedule. So let's go ahead and do a uh, lighting fixture schedule. And I'm going to select my style to be lighting fixture schedule. And I'll just type in all. Okay, oops, just a little too far. So right now I have uh, type C, I have 119 type C fixtures, right, and I have all the information here. If I were to just do a copy, copy, not circle, 
and I copy a group of devices down, you're going to see oh, this isn't set to automatically update. Let me undo that for a second. So by default, this is set to automatically update no. So I'm going to set that to yes, automatically add new objects, so I'm going to set to yes. And then you can even scan through extras and stuff if you want to. So now when I do a copy and I select some of these devices, and see that the total automatically updated in the schedule. Um, also, just like we did, looked at on the uh, plumbing fixture, um, if I go to my style here, uh, and go to my property sets, I can assign the property set information or the scheduling information per style or by object. So in this case, I don't have a model number associated with this. So I could assign the model number there, or if you want, you could do it later. I can just uh, select on the schedule and go into um, edit table cell for my type C fixture. I'm just going to pick on the model number and this just says I'm going to update multiple things because it's style based and I say I want this to be one two three four five six so I hit OK it adds that in and if I were to look at my uh, object again what I did is I just updated that right here in the style itself so if I said A B C D E F and hit OK now it's changed in the schedule. So it doesn't matter where you edit things, you could do it in the schedule or on the object and everything is being kept in sync. Okay. Let me uh, jump over to the power drawing just to show you a little bit more with, with that. So let's go to my second floor power. And by the way, um, if you want to download this data set, you know, feel free to, to do that. Um, one thing that I will say is that this is, a, is an old data set, and there are some um, settings that are not on here that, uh, that you would normally have. Like uh, a lot of the objects don't have a routing preference assigned to them uh, for ducting and piping and, and things because we didn't when I created this data set it didn't we didn't have that capability but feel free to you know download it take a look at it there's you know um, everything from you know the communication fire safety stuff fire sprinkler drawings there's uh, engineering drawings so uh, basically doing heat and cooling calcs with the software so there's a lot of uh, stuff that I'm not showing but feel free to download the data set and look through this if you like Okay, so here in my um, in my power drawing, um, there's a couple of interesting things. Is uh, here's an example of a circuit where we have um, two circuits on the same home run. So this is saying that this is connected to panel lab 49 circuits six and eight, and it's indicating that using the two arrowheads. Um, that you that are specified and you can totally control how all of that works if you don't want to see the multiple arrowheads or anything. Um, what I'm going to do is in, just to show you a little example of overloading a circuit is uh, I have a couple of in my normal devices here so if I hit edit style and you know this is set to uh, a load of 180 volt amps and then I've got a couple of um, devices down here which I set to have a high load, you know, just so I can overload a circuit easily. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my wire. I'll do an add selected. And when you connect something with wiring, just turn off uh, my object snaps again. When you connect something with wiring, um, it's automatically adding this device to that circuit. So I don't have to tell it what to do. But once I pick the second device, <clears throat> It now says, um, the total load is exceeding 80% of the rating. Do you want to continue? So it's not going to stop you from doing it. Uh, if you say yes, it's just going to go ahead and do it. Right? And say, I want to add that one as well. But now if I uh, go it back into Analyze, into my Circuit Manager, and I pick on lab 49, you'll see in nice bright red here that I'm overloading that circuit. So um, I, I could either remove some objects from that circuit, move them to a different circuit number, or if I want, I can just uh, maybe change my breaker size. So 30 amp doesn't work, but if I go to 40 amp, okay, it says that's just fine. So um, you, you can see what's happening in the model uh, at any point. 
We also added some tools in AutoCAD MEP 2017 that are brand new for this release to uh, change devices to a different circuit or to a different panel from a command line tool. Um, I don't really have time to show all of that, but uh, just so you know that that's there. And then the, the most favorite part of any electrical engineer is going to be uh, doing panel schedules. So if I want to do a panel schedule here for lab uh, 49, which we were just looking at, I can just sit there and say I want to do it from my project database if I was using that or the current drawing. In this case, it's kind of one and the same. It doesn't make any difference. And boom, there's my panel schedule. Right, um, showing me the load of each of the, the phases, all broken down. If I was using uh, demand factors, it would show all the demand factors here. Um, so it, it can keep track of all that for you, what the total load is, etc. cetera. Um, so panel schedules are really just a byproduct of doing your design. You don't have to go back and calculate things after the fact. They, it just sort of happens. Um, and then the last thing I want to show real quick is an example of uh, doing sections. So I go back. I said I was going to go back to my uh, HVAC floor plan. And uh, you know, when you have something like this, um, you know, it may be good enough to where I can just select a few objects and send them to my object viewer to see if um, things are hitting one another or something. Right? You can see that uh, in this case. The, uh, the duct is just underneath the other duct, just clearing it, right? So that's good. Um, but maybe I want to actually create an elevation for use later on instead of just looking at a static view. So we can do that. Uh, in this case, I'll just do a, a section line. And I'm just going to cut a line through my model, tell it um, how far to look. And by the way, this can even have jogs in it. It doesn't have to be just a straight section line. So I want to see everything back here. I could put this into a different drawing using my project navigator, or I'm, in this case, I'm just going to put it in the current drawing. Just give it a start point, and it'll go ahead and process all the geometry. And it just built that section for me in a couple of seconds. I, I didn't have to manually project lines, you know, drawing from corner to corner, or any of that kind of thing. And it, this isn't a, uh, an instant update of the model, but if I make a change to the model, and I apologize for the zooming in and out, my mouse is not behaving. But if I make a change to the model, like if I move this piece of equipment over here and I pan up a little bit, I just select on the section. And I'm just going to tell it to refresh. And this actually can be set to refresh automatically whenever I open the drawing as well. So that automatically uh, moves that stack to where it needs to be. Um, so generate elevations and sections is very easy. Um, if, if you had a wall behind here with brick, it, it could even show the material of the brick, et cetera. Um, but very, very powerful set of tools. Um, and with that, I will pass it back to Ashley and uh, go through the last couple of slides, and then we'll see what we can do for questions and uh, whatever time we have left. And I apologize, that's a quick overview. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Um, we do have some questions here, so I'll try and get through the last um, slides pretty quickly. Um, can you pass over the presenter role? Which I got. Good, I can see your screen. You can see my screen? OK, yeah. great. So um, some additional resources that we have here um, can all be found on the Autodesk Knowledge Network. We have um, for AutoCAD 2017 and LT 2017 and 16 as well, some hot fixes. And we have also our AutoCAD MEP website, AutoCAD MEP forum some getting started information on the AKN as well as learning and exploring information, service packs and hot fixes. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to join us. Dave, did you have something there to add to the? Yeah, I was just going to say uh, one other resource that I've, I didn't put on the slide, which would probably be good, is uh, a couple of months ago we did uh, Introduction to AutoCAD Architecture, which covers you know the just the architectural aspects and a little bit more about Detail Manager and all that. And as I said, in, uh, AutoCAD MEP includes all of AutoCAD architecture. So if you want to, you know, people want to go and look at that webcast, you can see the other half of MEP, if you will. 
Great. Thanks, Dave. Um, so again, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, we're going to get to the questions in a few minutes. We have um, a few here for you, Dave. Um, so if you'd like to, if you have any questions or you'd like to give your feedback about the webinar, you can email us directly at autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com and put in the subjects line, build your AutoCAD IQ, and uh, we'll get ready for some Q&A. Okay, so do you have, uh, you said you had some questions? I do have some questions here. Let me pull them up. Oh, and, and um, while you're doing that, just to, I, I see that there was one question about civil. Um, well, this isn't um, piping for civil engineering. Um, this does do a great job with uh, wastewater piping and such as uh, things like that as well. Um, so, you know, if you have uh, large duct aligning pipes that you need to model, then AutoCAD MEP can certainly handle that as well. Sorry about that, Dave. Hang on just a second. Okay. Trying to get a hold of the questions there. Victoria, do you have any questions on your side? So there's a question here about uh, specifying the elevation of ducts and, and things. So when you're drawing something, um, by the way, I didn't, I didn't show this, so this will give me a good example. Um, if I just hover over an object, it's going to tell me uh, you know, what, what that object is, including the elevation. So right now that's set to a 12-inch duct uh, or 12 feet high. If I do uh, an add selected, um, oh, can't do that. So let's just do a, a duct add. And I'm just going to set to rectangular uh, 24 by 12. And I, if I set it to 9 feet and I draw across, right, it's going to show oops, uh, actually, this is not showing. Uh, I have to go in, into my settings and turn on the um, hidden line display. It's one of the things I was telling you about that may or may not work. <laughs> um, but that's actually controlled under my display controls. Save hidden lines, yes. It looks like I'm getting some kind of weird masking there, but uh, basically when you when you draw a duct, there's a, an elevation setting, so you can put it at whatever elevation you want. So if I want it to be higher, I just change the elevation accordingly. We can also set slopes. So if you're doing piping and you want to um, you know, draw a sanitary piping or something, you can set a slope and draw it with the slope as well. Um, Oops. <laughs> yeah, I guess it makes sense to show my screen so that uh, people can actually see what I was trying to show. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's, as I was saying, if I do a duct add, and you can tell I'm an old school person because I like to type, there's an elevation setting here, so I can just set that to whatever elevation I want. Um, uh, another thing that's new to 2017, if you're using um, the software or been using it, um, you're going to see that, uh, like for example, for systems, there's uh, not a lot of systems that are defined in a template anymore. But if I pick on the little um, binoculars, you can come over and, and just double click on a system and it will add that into your drawing from the styles browser. So we're using the styles browser for all kinds of things nowadays uh, for everything from routing preferences to symbol selection or whatever. Um, so if you're familiar with the software and you open up a brand new drawing in 2017, so if I just do a new, right, and I do a duct add, oops, 
and I look at uh, my system here, all I have is standard. So if I wanted a supply, I come over and say supply, and it'll filter for me, and I can just pick whatever I want, and now that is automatically pulled into the drawing. So instead of populating the drawing with all kinds of stuff, we're just giving you um, everything that you can pull in very easily instead. Um, any other questions? Um, I'm not seeing any more. I think that you've, you've pretty much covered everything. Okay. Uh, um, so there's a question about uh, clash detection, and uh, although I'm not set up to do it, I'll just show you real quick. Um, I believe it's under Analyze. So there's an interference detection option here, and I can actually tell it what I want to check for and against. So I can say maybe I just want to check uh, ducts and pipes or something. So I can turn on um, just the stuff that I'm interested in, just ducts and pipes, go ahead and run it, and it'll create a report and create. it actually creates temporary objects wherever there is a, uh, an interference so that you can jump to that object and, and uh, you know, fix it and stuff as well. Um, so uh, yes, it does do interference detection. Um, probably not as robust as uh, like Navis does or something, but it absolutely does. Um, and there's a question about using 3D blocks from AutoCAD. Um, and yes, uh, actually if I had a, well, I'll just do a real simple thing. I'll just do a, well, I'll show you do a box since I do a 3D thing. So I, I can take a, just something like a box, um, create a block from it. So test. select the object and convert to a block. So now that this is a block, um, I can actually convert this to a multi-view part or to a device just by right-clicking on it and it'll allow you to add a smart connector and everything to the object. So if you have blocks that represent pumps or something, you can uh, very easily turn it into a smart part within the software. Um, there's also a great tool um, Let's see, where is this? Not there. Uh, where is it? There's a thing called the parametric part wizard. And basically with this, I can say like, um, I'm gonna do a multi-V part, I wanna do a pump. Um, basically I can fill in a table with the dimensions that I'm interested in and create a part um, just based on the, the values that I enter. So uh, there's a number of these templates that you can um, select from and build a pump that is has all the important values shown um, at, and you know, it'll create it for you on the fly. Um, I guess one last question here, um, since we're coming up on the top of the hour. Um, want to know if uh, things can be transferred to Revit using IFC. And yes, there's a IFC uh, export and import. So you can, um, it, it basically will bring the geometry across, but not all the intelligence. So you're, you, you'll lose the, uh, the intelligence from that, but you can bring the model across. So uh, with that, I guess uh, we'll call it a day. And I uh, thank you everybody that showed up uh, for the presentation and uh, hopefully you found this useful. I think that the next intro to an AutoCAD vertical that we do, which will probably be, probably be in a couple of months, will be an introduction to the uh, Civil 3D. So uh, if you have anybody that knows or wants to know a little bit about Civil, we'll, we'll be doing that one in a couple of months. And thanks and have a great day. Thank you.